Today we've got everyday home decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So for the first project we're going to be using some florals and these are some that I thrifted and they match the fabric that's there. I've got some lamb's ear and a couple of little white picks that look like baby's breath, a little piece of lace and satin ribbon that was thrifted and this is just a curtain piece of a curtain and then I'm going to use this fall sign from Dollar Tree there's a lot of things you can do with these cute little jar signs I'm going to use a flat paintbrush and a little bit of white paint just to cover up some of that black I'm going to remove the original ribbon off of there and the hanger and just start going over this black. I just want to cover this up because I don't want any of that black to show when I put my greenery down. So pretty much I'm just kind of erasing it essentially. It's not going to be solid and I'm not concerned about that. I just want to get rid of some of the harshness. So that's what I'm doing here. But you can use any type of paint that you want. I'm just playing around here. <laughs> any kind of paint you want. Acrylic will work. You could spray paint it. Whatever you want to do. I'm going to take a little bit of my antiquing wax and a stiff brush and I'm going to go over that gray top that I pulled off, the little metal top, just to give it a little more of an aged look. A little heavier on the sides and then I'll kind of go across the center and the top of it. It's very subtle, there's not a lot going on here. You can certainly use a brown paint if you would like and stipple that on whatever way you want to do it. Now, just to take a little bit of the blue out of that white sign, I'm going to go ahead and use a baby wipe with a tiny bit of the remainder of that antiquing wax. And I'm just sort of dirtying up, muddying up this bluish gray background. In order to fit into my rustic decor and all the wood in my house, it's, the color's got to be a little warmer. So that's all I'm doing here, but you can certainly do it any way you like. Now, the letter in the front is a window, so I'm going to put this fabric that I like a lot right across that window so you can see it when I hang it up. It's a very pretty yellow print with the blue and white flowers. This could be considered a, I'm going to call it an everyday project, but it certainly could be considered something that you might want to, to do at springtime. Certainly the colors would work for that. And I'm just gonna go along here and make sure I don't get any glue in the little window or the opening where the letter is. And I wanna make sure there's no wrinkles so it lays nice and smooth. Once the top is dried, I'm gonna lay this metal piece right back on and then clean up my glue. I made a little bit of a mess. I have it on the cool temperature and start taking apart some of these picks. I'm not gonna use them in whole pieces it's very easy to pull the plastic leaves off of the metal picks. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to just start laying these down in any way that starts to look good. I didn't have an exact idea, but if you've watched my videos before, you know how I do it. I kind of go by my gut and just see what looks right. And it's just glue. You know, you can always move things around. If you put something down and you don't like it, just, just move it. Pull it off of there and move it. I'm just going to continue along. I've got some single leaves and then I have some that are trios just in different shapes and patterns here and I'm just layering those up to make them look nice and full and pretty. I hope everybody had a wonderful holiday season and that everyone is well. I know I did. I enjoyed my break and I appreciate your patience while I got all those mega videos out so that I could spend a little time with my family. It meant a lot to me and I appreciate your support. All right, same thing on the bottom. Keep in mind, you don't wanna get your wax, that antique wax on anything that you wanna glue on. Um, so just be careful about that. I got a little bit, but not too much and I wiped it back because the wax will kind of make the, the paint and the glue kind of peel up a little bit, so. Just watch for that. Place those down there. Oh, and by the way, I did reach my 10,000 subscriber goal and I'm so excited. Now I've got to do a giveaway for that 10,000 subscriber mark 
and I've got to purchase something to give away as a prize. So I'm still working on that. I did not forget about you. So if you would like to be part of that, continue to support me and love me and I will continue to shower you with all kinds of goodies. Okay, so now I'm just gonna pull those the blue ones off just like you saw and I'm gonna add those little dainty blue flowers in there. Very pretty flowers. I'm gonna add those in and then I'll be adding in those little, they almost look like, I don't know, I don't know, what would you call those little white flowers down there? I'm not sure what those are, but they kind of put me in the mind of baby's breath. They're just very dainty. So you're just gonna keep moving around here and putting things where they look good. And consider using some florals that are gonna complement the print that you use behind your letter. I'm sure lots of people got these when they were um, at Dollar Tree this year. So I hope you got one. And if you haven't known what to do with it, consider doing something like this. This is really cute. I think this would be super cute in a kitchen or even hanging on your front door. It's gonna continue along. Oh, I wanna say thank you also, because I'm a little behind. Thank you for all those people who have um, bought me coffee. I appreciate it. Be sure you follow me on my social media, on Pinterest and Instagram. All right, continuing along. Get it as full as you would like. Add any type of embellishment that you would like. I'm gonna take my ribbon here because I would like to add a bow. This is just gonna make it look more of a, um, I would consider this piece probably a classic farmhouse piece. And generally, I try to blend in rustic and farmhouse together, but for this particular one, this is for my farmhouse girls who love their neutrals and love these colors. So we're just gonna make a very, very simple bow and trim it down to the length that you like. If you leave these ends too long on the bows, it is going to hang down and obscure your monogram there. So if you want that to show, and I did want mine to show, just be sure that you get those tails at the right length so that you can easily tack them down on the side and you can still see your pretty letter underneath with whatever pattern that you choose and that'll hold it in place. Not bad. So you could use it as a leaner if you wanted to, or you could put a little hanger on the back. And I'm just using a piece of this wire jute that I already had, because I'm all about repurposing, because we gotta save our money, right? So I'm just gonna tack this down with a little bit of glue, and be careful, watch those fingers. I'm just kinda blending that glue into the fibers, and then once it is dry, you can flip it over. You don't want it to glue down to your table. And this is what you get for project number one. For the next project, I'm going to make a little, I don't know, it's a raised box. Look at these little chess pieces I found. It was an incomplete set. It had a bunch of different kinds and I thought these are perfect legs. Perfect guys, perfect legs. So I'm gonna use this little English breakfast tea box and I'm gonna make something super cute. I'm gonna use my antiquing wax again, of course. Got it in the cup. I'm gonna choose what legs I like and what color, because there are two different colors here. I'm gonna add a little water to my antique wax and mix it well, and we're gonna use this as a stain. I don't wanna use the wax by itself because it would be too dark for the look I'm going for. So watering it down gives you a bit of a stain that doesn't have any odor, and it dries really quickly. So here we go in that beautiful, and I guess really you could have used tea or coffee to stain this if you would like. But this is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. I have had the same bottle of antiquing wax forever. I know I've had it for it at least a year and I'm still getting use out of it. So you really get bang for your buck when you buy some of these things. All right, I'm making sure I get around the hinges, the opening of the box right here, and that just really soaks in that stain and I love it. It gives it a the aged look and the darker look that I like rather than that kind of outdated honey color or nude color. And I do that on a baby wipe because if you use a paper towel, it can shred and it makes kind of a mess. You might get a little lint if you put it on a rag and baby wipes, you can just use it and throw it away. 
So now we're going to start putting the legs down and I'm just using hot glue for this. No need to put down anything stronger than hot glue because I'm not going to be stacking bricks on this. Just going to kind of eyeball it and use my fingers to get it the same distance from the corner so that all of them will be in the same spot. I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family if you would like to join us. So easy to do and it's free. All right, so now that I have all my corners, I can go ahead and finish painting the bottom. I didn't want to do it before because like I said, the glue and the wax do not mix well. They kind of repel each other. So I just want to make sure that the entire piece is, is looking good, so I'm finishing off the bottom too. You can use this little box for storage for jewelry. You could use it as a planter. You could use it to put anything you want to in. Look how precious this is. Oh, I love this. And I knew exactly what, it, what I wanted to do with it when I saw this at Goodwill. I missed a spot. I'll go back over there and fix that. Get the glue off. Yeah, simple. This was so simple. Okay, now I got this $32, uh-uh, no. Never in my life would I pay that for that. But I got it at Goodwill. It's black. It's about 11 inches by five inches. And it is just a, like a, I would say resin, but it's almost like wood. I'm going to use some of this spray paint, and it is a stone texture, and some of this oatmeal chalk paint. I want to use that textured paint to cover up the bobos, because you see there's a crack, and I've cleaned this with an alcohol wipe, the whole thing inside and out. I want to use the textured paint underneath, and then layer the top. So see, I put one good coat here outside in the sun to dry and I did let that dry completely as instructed. I didn't put any on the inside. Once it dried I get this beautiful texture which is exactly what I wanted so that it looks almost like it is pottery. I'm gonna take this oatmeal paint and my flat brush just because I love a flat brush. Protect your surface and then start laying this down. And I was really impressed with this. Now that spray you can get at Walmart, but I'm sure you could get it at any craft store as well. Just some type of a textured paint that you like. And there, when I get it in the light just right, you can see all of that raised texture. Love this. This is gonna give me exactly the look that I wanted. Now just using long strokes back and forth, I'm laying down that paint mm, rather thickly. I want this to look almost like it's been on a pottery wheel and so the direction of the paint would be side to side because a pottery wheel will spin you know in the same direction so that's what I'm trying to achieve here I did let this paint dry and then go over it a second time and also painted the inside and the lip but you've got to make sure that it's completely dry before you flip it over so you don't damage your paint Just continue around just like this and it's good if you have a sunny day to let it dry in the sun if not just get in an area where you have some low humidity look at this oh this is perfect this is exactly what I wanted you could always distress it further if you wanted to um, I don't know exactly what would happen if you use sandpaper on it but I'd be afraid the black would show and I don't want that so I love this this looks to me like a piece of pottery on to the next project. Why would somebody paint this? I have no idea, but I'm not feeling it, so I'm going to scrape it off. You know, you can't blame a DIYer for doing what they feel like their heart's desire is, but I just don't get that. I love this bowl, and I don't know why anybody would paint it. So I'm trying my darndest to scrape it off and scratch it off. I have used a bunch of tools. I used all kinds of sanding blocks and pads. This was very difficult to get off. I did take it outside, use a little bit of a hand sander, and bring it back in, and this is how it looked. I did wipe it off. I did not want to sand it completely down because I'm going to add the color back in it. This was a booger, and there's still a couple little dots of paint that are still in there, and I just decided to leave those and call it aged. We'll call that rustic, won't we? That's what we do. Okay, so now I'm gonna use my wood tint, and I believe it's walnut. And I'm going to lay this on and wipe this off. This is a tint. It doesn't have a foul odor. It dries quickly. And this wood, whatever kind it is, is very absorbent. 
so it really sucks up this um, this color it really sucks it up and I'm glad because I like it but I'm gonna lay it on and wipe it off just like this I went and got a rag and so after you put it on and you wipe it down you can see the wood grain through it again if you leave it on thick you won't be able to see your wood grain you wipe, you put it on and you wipe it back off and it's beautiful and exactly the finish and the texture that I like I don't want to bore you but I do want you to see the way that I'm using the brush and the way that I'm wiping it off you can see the order of it how it's done so that there's no confusion now on the inside I'm just gonna make sure that I go around the bottom the size the lip and uh, get full coverage on all of that and I pressed that color down into the little areas where I really had to bear down on the sander to get it to get the color out this was a booger to do but I'm gonna tell you it was well worth it because this is a gorgeous little I think it's like a little dough bowl isn't it pretty and it's just a little thing it's so cute okay so once it is completely dry this is how it looks it does lighten up quite a bit so the next thing we need to do is to seal it and that's what I have this for this is my translucent wax from folk art I love love all the products that I get from plaid I am an ambassador and I get to try all kinds of products and I'm so grateful because they have some amazing quality and very affordable prices so I'm gonna take a very soft cloth and this is a piece of a car detailing cloth that comes from Dollar Tree so it's the white fuzzy ones and I'm gonna use that to lay this wax on here now you need to follow the instructions to see how long it says that the wax needs to stay on before you buff it down but you can see it gives it sort of a sheen there while it's wet and I'm gonna use the same really the same technique I'm just actually kind of massaging it into there I'm giving a little more attention putting on this wax than I did when I was putting on the paint um, to just make sure that I really really cover all the surfaces well and I don't have areas that are more matte than others you know you just want everything to look nice and complete and well done because that's what puts your projects as more high-end looking than others so now I'm buffing it's all dried I followed my instructions and waited the dry time I think I actually waited two days now I'm just taking a nice little cloth here it's a little scrap of fabric and I am buffing or rub it in little circles all the way around to finish off this little bowl and I think that this is a beautiful everyday piece that you can use anywhere in your house I wanted to do a little something extra with this so you may see this in another project yeah you'll be seeing this again I think not bad totally rustic love it this is how our items look so we have our little dough bowl there and I have styled the little box with some florals there's our beautiful farmhouse sign and I've got some picks just placed in that vase there I think we have a variety here it's a little bit of something for everyone I asked my subscribers what did they want to see and I had a good mix of everyday and Valentine's so that's what I'm giving you guys I appreciate you so 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 much I can't wait to see you again and be looking out for that giveaway because it's coming very very soon I do not want you to miss the opportunity to be part of that so if you subscribe and you click that little bell and put the quotes around it you'll get notifications every time I put out content so you don't miss your chance I'll see you again soon bye